Shalom, precious viewers. We are so glad that you have joined us with this conversation, the testimony that we are going to share with you today. For those who are on YouTube, I would love you to press that subscribe button, like, and press that bell as well so that you do not miss out on all the weekly testimonies that we've got to share with you because this is where lives are changed. We are going to talk with Jacqueline Ruth. She is our English presenter and she's got a wonderful testimony. She can bring so much hope for those who are in bondage. You know, she had a child. As a child, she was in bondage. She had a vision and a dream but the world came and stole that dream from her and maybe there's somebody that's watching this testimony today that's got a hardship since childhood rejection and a lot of things that's sitting in your heart today this testimony will might change your life and I pray that when you listen to this testimony that God will reveal his love to you and that you will know that he loves you dearly and that you are not alone in this world and we want to bring Jesus and hope to you Jacqueline it is such a pl privilege <laughs> to talk to you today. I'm so glad you're speaking to me in English because we only ever speak Afrikaans. Yeah, and you know, my English is not as good as, as yours. Oh, you sound lovely. <laughs> so I'm going to try my very best. Well, I have told the viewers that uh, and when a, and a child, as a child, a young girl, you had this vision to be in ministry. You spoke to the trees. You actually prophesied and sang to the trees. Tell us about that. Tell us about that. So as a young girl, I didn't grow up in, I mean, my mom believed in Jesus. And my dad always said to me that, uh, you know, he um, kind of chased me out of the house when I spoke too much about God and Jesus. So, um, but as a young girl, I grew up in a town called Clarkstorp. I was born in Joburg mm -hmm. and I grew up in a town in Clarkstorp in the Northwest. And we had these big plots of land in the back of our yards. And I'll never forget, I would stand on the porch for those, uh, for those of you who are not South African, I'll use the word porch. We say stoop. And uh, I'd stand on the porch and I'd overlook all these fruit trees in our garden. And I would say, Jesus loves you. Now, I, don't, I didn't like really go much to church. If I did, it was like on the odd occasion. And it would usually be with friends or other family members or whatever. And I would say, Jesus loves you. And then I would sing to the trees and I would prophesy over the trees, not even understanding what prophecy was. So, um, and I had all these beautiful, beautiful, amazing dreams of inspiring people, encouraging people and lifting them up, you know. And I would imagine people coming um, in front of the stage and they'd be crying and they'd be broken and completely shattered with no hope. Mm -hmm. And I'd imagine just telling them, Jesus loves you. And then they'd just be lifted up and they'd just be full of joy. So that's kind of what I was dreaming about. But you know, I see, I see the image of Jesus in that because that is his dream for his children. When he created you, he said, let's create men according to his image. And yes. that was his image. That is his image, is love and to care for people, for the brokenhearted, for those who are, who are lost and, and the poor, because that is what Jesus wants us to do. But then the world comes and it steals that from us. Mm. And and something happened in your life. Your purity was stolen from you mm. as a young child, as a mm. young girl. And um, and in, in this dissociation disorder, uh, uh, this situation, dissociation. dissociation disorder became part of your life. Mm. And that was not God's will. Tell us about that. So as a young girl... Um, I used to get like little flickers of memory coming up throughout my my life growing up of somebody touching me inappropriately and doing things to my body that was not right. It wasn't the plan of God for my life. And um, not really fully understanding what was going on. What are these flashes that I'm getting? So because I couldn't make sense of it, I never spoke about it because I thought, you know, <laughs> Yes, Jackie, the ADHD girl that doesn't know how to shut up and everybody like I irritate everybody. So it was I used to feel like I'm a burden. So I never wanted to speak about what are these flashes of memory I was getting. 
Then, um, at Emma Trick, I had always believed I was a virgin. And in my trick, something traumatic happened to me. And in that trauma, a flood of memories happened of molestation when I was a young girl and rape at the age of 13. And suddenly, it felt like it had just happened and I had a complete meltdown. And I was saying over and over and over, crying, I've been raped, I've been raped. So everybody thought it happened now. And how do you explain to someone, this happened years ago, but it feels like it's happened now. But it was blocked away yes. in your memory. That was such a trauma you had you had gone through. Mm. And because of that trauma, you blocked it away to protect yourself. And that's why you forgot about it. And mm. then... You know, sometimes it's just well, it's, a sense that reminds you like a smell mm. that, that's familiar and it reminds you and it triggers. And you don't even know what that is. No. You just and know it's something familiar. Yes, yeah. And and then you got raped again and uh, you went through an abortion. And then, Jax, I would like you to share that with us because mm. maybe there's a, a woman or a lady out there that's gone through an abortion and sitting with this mm. with this burden in their heart and they feel like God will never forgive them for what they've done mm. and that they are lost for life. How can you share what, what God revealed to you? So I think I just want to mention that throughout my life, it wasn't just those two incidents. I was molested several times over and not by the same person. Yeah. Friends, fathers, and I think the reason why I was such an easy target mm. is because I could not say no. I was too afraid. Mm. And when you are molested on a regular basis, people with that spirit recognize it yes. and they know. Mm. So um, it gets picked up and then you become an easy target for people who actually do molest children. So it was something that I went through, not on a daily basis, but it was something I went through maybe once a year, something like this would happen to me. And um, the, I started believing I'm at fault and I started believing I'm dirty and I am not worthy of anything. I'm not worthy of love. I'm not worthy of anything in my life. But I had such a strong mindset that I would internalize and block it off. Yes. And then for, for years, even after I met the Lord, I sat for years in therapy. And um, I ended up in a situation after I left school where I was raped. Mm. And it was very, it was very traumatic, very traumatic. I, I didn't know how to process it. I didn't know how to live with the memory of it. And a few weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. And as someone who was not a Christian, even though I didn't believe in abortion at that time, I immediately found a doctor. So I didn't have time to process or think about it. And I had that defense mechanism again. Just deal with it, get it over with, get it out the way, don't ever think about it again. And I went and did that. Within a day of finding out I was pregnant, within a day I had an abortion because there was a doctor who did abortions and I said to him, if you don't do this now, I will find a way to do this. Mm -hmm. So you either do this in a healthy manner for me or I will find a way to do this. And he realized I was very volatile mm -hmm. and um, he arranged the very next morning. I was in hospital and um, I had the abortion done. And that absolutely numbed me for years. Even as a Christian, after encountering this passionate, incredible love of Jesus, there were certain areas of my life that I didn't deal with. No. How did you get delivered from that guilt? Do you know that it was about 13 years ago. And I know because my daughter was about a couple of months old. Yeah. And uh, 
the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, I said to the Lord, I'm praying, I'm praying, but it feels like my prayers are hitting the ceiling and I know it's not God. So something's wrong. Lord, show me. And I came into the presence of God and the Lord said to me, Jackie, you don't have remorse for the abortion. And I thought about it and I said, you're right, I don't. So can you give it to me? Yes. Give me remorse because I don't feel sorry. I feel like I rescued a child mm. who would have been a product of rape. And I felt justified. And even in my quiet time, talking to the Lord, and I believe it's important that we are honest with God. Yeah. Tell Him the truth. Mm. How, he knows your heart. Absolutely. When you have prayer time and God says something to you, don't just say, sorry, sorry. Say, I don't feel this, Lord, mm. but give me remorse. Mm. And a few weeks later, I went to church and our pastor was there and he said to me, well, he didn't say anything to me. He spoke to the congregation. He said, if you have pain in your body, come forward. And I had back pain and I don't usually go forward for something so small, but I felt like go forward. And I went forward and um, I had my hands up like this and he just gently touched my hands. And as he touched my hands, I don't think he knew what was going on with me because <laughs> this is just a prayer line for healing, you know. Mm -hmm. But the anointing was on him. Yes. And the word of God says the anointing breaks the yoke. Mm -hmm. So although he was praying for physical healing, God gave me spiritual, emotional healing. And as he laid his hands on my hands, I had a vision of the most beautiful girl this long black hair and she had her hands, teenage girl had her hands raised to the Lord and she was serving God and she was worshipping God with all of her heart. And I never cried for the loss of that child before that day. And I cried for probably six months, six months to a year, I don't know, it was a long period of time, almost every day because I finally grieved the loss of that child and I had remorse. But I sank to the ground and I, I cried like I'd lost a child that has been in my life for years. And for the first time, I had remorse. So if you think it's impossible to have remorse for your sin because maybe you feel justified, it's not impossible. God is able to give you remorse, but you have to ask Him for it. It's the same as when you, you are sinning and you know it's wrong, but you don't, you don't, your conscience is seared. But if you go to the Lord and you say, Father, I know this is wrong, but if you will give me remorse, if you will give me a heart to repent, if you will give me what I need to be free, I will do it. And God will give it to you. He's not a cruel God. He's merciful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I must tell you that, um, and I think this is a very important message to the viewers as well. For those who have been through um, abuse and molestation and rape um, many times, one time after another, you mm -hmm. know, when you, I can talk about this myself. And for those who have watched our testimony, um, since I can remember as a child, I was molested and, and, and abused and, um, and I couldn't understand it. And then when I got married, um, I was pregnant with my, with my second child. And, um, you know, okay, I've been through the, the forgiveness and all those type of things. I got delivered from that. But then men, on, when I was pregnant, men came to me. And they wanted me. And I was not even advertising. My, I, I mm. mean, I'm, I'm happily married. But men came to me. And, and I know you're just, incredibly happily married. Because I've, <laughs> I've watched your marriage. And I go, I want a marriage like that. <laughs> but God gave me Peter. Because yes. I prayed for him when I was in Standard 5. And he gave me exactly what I asked for. But at that time, when I was pregnant, these men came to me. And they just said, I want you. And I want your baby. Wow. I cried. And I, and I went to my friend. And I said, I don't know what's going on. I'm not even, I'm pregnant. I feel ugly. And these men, they just come to me and mm -hmm. they buy me suits and I don't want anything to do with them. What's going on? And she said to me, remember when you got molested, 
the person that molested you had the spirit of a lust. And that spirit is lying in you. Not that mm. I have a spirit of lust, but those, their spirit of lust became, uh, you know, um, is, it attached itself is attached to you. To me. Yes. And they, because I've got that spirit of lust over me, when a person, when a man, a man walks past me, that spirit of lust, if he's got a spirit of lust, it immediately connects with the spirit of lust that's lying upon me. And then she said to me, break that spirit off. And we've done that. And the next time when those people, the same men that used to come to me, they didn't even notice me. Mm. And I said, Lord, what is happening? And that is what I want to share with the viewers today. If you've been through abuse many, many times, mm. I beg you, please go to your pastor and break the spirit of lust of mm. your life because that is going to Mm. That is going to be a, 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 it's going to release you and, and you're going to feel mm. free. And, and, and that's what I did. And God delivered mm. me from that spirit of mm. lust and I never had that problem again. But Jax, um, you know, the enemy uses our circumstances or our situations. And he plants a seed of suicide if you cannot mm. handle the yeah. situations anymore. And that is what happened to you mm. on the age of 16. No, it was actually 23. 23. Yeah. I actually, during my childhood, um, I had twice tried to commit suicide. Mm. I think my mother was a nervous wreck with me. Nobody understood what was going on with me because I didn't have the, you know, when you don't have the vocabulary mm. to explain, this is what's happened. Mm. Or I'm having flashes of this. I don't know if I am crazy. I don't know if I'm a, if, you know, mm. if I've got it all together and you feel so ashamed, so you push it down mm. and you are constantly putting bricks on top of memories, on top of trauma and instead of it getting better, underneath those bricks is just festering and festering. So then what happens when something festers, when a cyst mm. festers, eventually it cracks and it ruptures, right? Mm. And the amount of times I had raptures and suicidal attempts I don't think you know I look at my mom today and I think thank God for the mom that I have because I don't think anybody else could have handled me <laughs> I know she almost had nervous breakdowns because of me but <laughs> I don't think anybody else could have handled me and my mom was actually really protective but somehow there was always opportunity you know for the enemy to come in but at the age of 23, I was living with a guy who's six, who was 16 years older than me. And I made, my sister came to visit and she's four years younger than me. Now, I've got no problem if somebody's in a relationship and they, you know, you're a lot older than someone, as long as it's from God. But in this particular case, it wasn't. And um, I never realized how this guy his his perception was totally wrong and just not right. Mm. And we were together for quite a long time and he turned around and he was drunk and I was drunk and that's how I used to numb myself was I was an alcoholic. And he turned around and he said to me in his drunken state, turned around and he said to me, if I've met your sister before I met you, I'd rather have been with her. Now, mm. bearing in mind, that was the first night I drank hard liquor as much as I could. Not the first night I drank hard liquor, but the first night that I was drinking hard liquor that I couldn't get drunk. And I was drinking as much of it as I could, bottles of it. I should have had alcohol poisoning. And I was sober. And I believe God was keeping me sober to save my soul. And I was getting angry that night. Angrier and angrier because I couldn't get drunk. So this guy went to bed after saying to me he'd rather have been with my sister than would he have been with me. And that crushed me because I'm like, you know, I might not even really love you because I don't think I did love him. But still, why don't you want me? Every, I felt at one stage everybody wanted to use my body, but they didn't want me as a person. So my only tool for love and acceptance was my body. And I lied on the floor that night and I cried out to God. And I, I cried so, so much 
that I actually stay in the parquet floor with my tears. I'll never forget it. And I said to the Lord, if you are real, show yourself to me. Because if you don't, I'm going to kill myself. And I'm taking my son with me because hell can't be worse than this. Sure. And he needs to he needs to come with me. I can't leave him here. So the next day on my way to commit suicide, I had a nice party with a coke truck, <laughs> knocked us off a bridge. My son had a little scratch on his back and I've got a crushed arm. My whole body was in ribbons on the side, lost my front tooth, so I don't have a real tooth. <laughs> but I came into the presence of Jesus and I remember saying, I just want to stay. And it was like he opened a curtain, he showed me my son and he said, it's not time yet. But Yanita in his presence, whew, I'm going to try and talk about this without crying. <laughs> don't know if it's possible. Because it's overwhelming. And the peace, mm. the love. I will never. Every time I talk about this, it's like it happened yesterday. I came in the presence of Jesus. And I never liked many things about me. Even though I used my body as a tool, I didn't like my body. I felt dirty, so dirty, like I could never get clean. And I couldn't stand my nose. My nose is, well, I used to feel, my nose is so big, it's so long, it's so whatever. And there was so much about myself I didn't like. I didn't like my hair. I wanted thick, beautiful hair and I have lots of hair, but it's thin, you know. And so as women, we judge that about ourselves. But I came in the presence of Jesus and I felt every cell in my body, even the dead cells, which is our hair, I felt his presence in my head, in my nose, on my nose, every cell in my body. And I, he didn't have to say a word. This love permeated my entire body that I knew there and then. I am so deeply loved. And um, the other thing that I felt, because prior to that, I'd get into showers and I'd wash and make my skin raw from all the abuse that I've been through, trying to get clean. And I'm sure you know what that's like. You just want to be clean. You just want to be clean. And nothing I did could make me clean. But I came in the presence of Jesus and I felt like a brand new baby who'd never been touched never sinned and I was brand new but I know it's because I asked him show me who you are and it came as a cry of my heart and when you cry out to Jesus he will show you who he is and how much he loves you absolutely because he gives life Life in abundance. That's right. And he makes new. He makes his creation new. Yeah. So whatever has gone in, uh, wrong in your life, he comes and he replaces it with something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that is so precious, Jax, that you can walk with that for the rest of your life and cherish that because that is only Jesus. Only Jesus that can do that. Jax, when you met Jesus at that moment, you knew that you were accepted by him. But the thing is that you have to, you have to take it for yourself as well. You have to accept yourself as well. Mm. Did you do that? No. It took me almost 20 years of being so deeply in love with Jesus. And getting to a place where I realized, you know what, I love Jesus so much. I help everyone else around me, but I don't love myself. And the one day the Lord said to me, Jackie, look in the mirror. And I used to avoid making eye contact with myself. And I was like, uh-huh. And I'd look in the mirror and I, I'd kind of like look, but not really take a good look at myself, you know. And the Lord said to me, look in the mirror. I was like, why? And he said, look at your eyes. Look into your eyes in the mirror. And I was like, Lord, what are you doing? And I started crying. And he said to me, the eyes are the windows to your soul. Mm. When you're looking in the mirror, you're seeing Christ in you. And I want you to say, Jackie, I forgive you. Wow. 
Jackie, God loves you. Jackie, I love you. Jackie, God accepts you. Mm. And I didn't have to do it once. I had to do it a lot of times. And there came a day, and it wasn't that long ago, that I got to a place where the presence of God came on me. And this joy radiated from me because now it's no longer me loving you because Jesus loves you. And I know Jesus loves me, but actually deep down, I don't really love me. Mm. But I've gotten to a place where I love who I am. I like who I am as a person. Mm. I know I make mistakes, but I don't do anything intentionally to hurt anyone. And the word says that the pure of heart will see God. And purity is not something that has happened to you or that you've done wrong. Purity is a pursuit of God. Mm -hmm. That's what purity is. It's the pursuit of God and to obey his word and to get into his presence and to be hungry and thirsty for God. My whole life, every day, I have a lot of people say to me, oh man, you are just, you just, you just only talk about Jesus. That's all you can. It's because the only thing is, I want to talk about. He's in you. Yes. He's charged through you. I've tried talking about something else. I've tried no. talking about other things. It doesn't it's work. Like, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just that. It's, it's people don't else. understand. When God is, yes. Isn't it? When God has, and in fact, God told me to write a book about that. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm busy writing a book. I'm taking a big leap of faith here, actually saying this to you guys. I didn't plan on mentioning it because now I'll actually now have to go and it. finish it. <laughs> but I'm busy writing a book called um, Claim Your Inheritance. It's in your DNA. Absolutely. Because when you know who God is, mm. when you know the character of God, when you know who God is, you'll know who you are because you are not God, but you are his child. And you are created in his image and in his likeness. And something that the Lord has spoken to me about a couple of months ago was Isaiah 11 verse 2. And it speaks about the seven spirits of God. Yes. And the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, if you will do what Corinthians tells you, that if you join yourself to God, you choose it, you join yourself to God, and you become one in spirit with him. You are created in his image and likeness. Therefore, everything God is, you can be in terms of your character, um, whatever promise he gives you in the word. I want to ask you today, who ever told you to stop dreaming? Who ever told you that you can't believe God and take him at his word? For what he tells you in his word. His word is truth. And if you choose today to have a personal relationship with him, he will not only set you free, but he will give you the desires of your heart. As Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, that God will give you above, beyond all that you can ever dream, ask, think, or even imagine. But here's the key. It's according to the power that's for work on the inside of you. You need to have a relationship with him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. Once you start tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, you can't get enough. It's like starting to eat your favorite dessert that you just can't get enough. You won't be able to once you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. And mm -hmm. I can testify of that. <laughs> we have tasted his goodness and we will never go back. Jax, thank you so much for sharing, for being vulnerable and sharing your testimony with the world to give them hope, to give them Jesus <laughs> and love because that is what all, that's all that matters. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of this testimony. If you would like to hear the rest of it, she actually did a, an Afrikaans testimony as well that is on our YouTube. So you're more than welcome to go and watch for those who are in Afrikaans. Go and watch 
her testimony. She will talk about more about her. Um, she will talk more about her childhood, what she's been through, and um, and how she also got delivered from that. But I would like to bless you with God's love and His presence, and may you experience Him there where you are. Just open up your heart and know that He loves you deeply and that you are accepted by Him. God loves you. We will speak to you again. Take care. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.